In this video, we will discuss that what is evaporation, vapor pressure and boiling. And at the end of this video, you will be able to distinguish easily between the evaporation, vapor pressure and boiling. So without wasting time, let's start the video. What is evaporation? The spontaneous escape of the high energy molecules from the liquid surface into the vapor state is called evaporation. Or simply we can say that evaporation is a process of the change of the liquid to a gaseous state below its boiling point. Remember that evaporation is a surface phenomena and it takes place at all temperature below the boiling point. All the molecules in the liquid do not possess equal energies at any temperature, so they move with different velocities. When the high energy molecules hit the molecules on the surface of the liquid, they give part of their energy to the surface molecules, which become able to overcome the force of attraction and thus leave the liquid surface. In this way, evaporation takes place. Factors affecting evaporation First is the intermolecular force of attraction. To understand the effect of intermolecular force of attraction on evaporation, let's perform an experiment. Pour some water in one plate and ether into another plate. After some time, you can observe that the water evaporate to a very little extent whereas the ether evaporate quickly. This is due to the strong force of attraction present between the water molecules which hold the molecules firmly and less molecules can overcome the force of attraction and escape out of the liquid surface into the vapor or the gaseous state. Whereas the ether having the less force of attraction and the more molecules can easily overcome the force of attraction and escape into the gaseous state. That is why ether is said to be volatile. From this experiment, we conclude that more the force of attraction present between the molecules result in the less rate of evaporation. And the less or weak force of attraction between the molecule result in greater or quick evaporation. Temperature Temperature also affects the rate of evaporation. Do you observe the quick drying of the washcloths during hot sunny day? The reason is that heat increases the kinetic energy of the surface molecules of the clothes quickly and gives chance to the greater number of the molecules to escape out into the gaseous state and hence increase the rate of evaporation. Whereas in the winter, temperature is comparatively less. So less molecules can gain the chance to increase the kinetic energy and escape out to the gaseous state. Therefore, the rate of evaporation is slow during winter. From this, we conclude that temperature is directly proportional to the kinetic energy of the molecules. It means that with the increase of the temperature, the kinetic energy of the molecules increases, which result in greater rate of evaporation. Surface area Evaporation is a surface phenomena, so it depends upon the surface area. More the surface area, more will be the evaporation. For example, the water present in the glass takes more time to evaporate than if we spread water on the floor. This is because the greater the surface area, greater the number of the liquid molecules have the chance to escape out into the vapor state and hence higher is the rate of evaporation. Remember that the rate of evaporation is independent of the amount of the liquid. Wind if wind is blowing, the rate of evaporation will be faster. This is because that the air blown above the surface of the liquid takes away the escaping molecules and space is made available for the other molecules. It means that the wind speed increase result in the greater amount of the water vapor escaping. As a result, the rate of evaporation increases.
So let's discuss that what is vapor pressure. Let's start understanding the vapor pressure with the help of animation. Consider a liquid in a closed container. Initially, the liquid is changing into the gaseous state and we know that the evaporation is the change of the liquid into the gaseous state. Here this red circle representing the change of the liquid into the gaseous state means here the evaporation process starts. At the beginning, the rate of the evaporation will be fast, whereas no condensation. As you can see here in the second diagram, that the rate of evaporation is greater as compared to the rate of condensation. And we know that the evaporation is the change of the liquid into the gaseous state representing by the red circles, whereas the condensation is the change of the gases into the liquid state that is represented by the purple circles. But with the passage of time, the rate of evaporation will become slow and slow, while the condensation rate becomes fast and fast. And ultimately, the two rates becomes equal, as shown in the third diagram. Here, the rate of the evaporation is equal to the rate of condensation. As you can see here in the diagrams, that the liquid changing into the vapor state or the gaseous state is equal to the gases changes into the liquid state. So here the dynamic equilibrium is established between the liquid and its vapors. So at this stage the pressure exerted by the vapors at equilibrium on the liquid surface is called the vapor pressure. So vapor pressure is the pressure of the vapor present at equilibrium in a closed container is called the vapor pressure of the liquid or the pressure of the vapors when a liquid and its vapors are in state of dynamic equilibrium is called the vapor pressure. Remember that here the rate of the evaporation is equal to the rate of condensation means that the liquid changing into the gaseous state is equal to the gases changing into the liquid state. It means that there is a dynamic equilibrium between the liquid and its vapors. Factors affecting vapor pressure. The first factor that affects the vapor pressure is the force of attraction or the intermolecular forces. Remember that the vapor pressure depends upon the nature of the liquid. Different liquids have different intermolecular forces. Remember that the liquid having the stronger intermolecular forces show the low vapor pressures. For example, water. Whereas the liquid having the weak intermolecular forces or weaker force of attraction show the high vapor pressure rate. For example, ether. Do you know that why water is non-volatile and ether is volatile in nature? Because water has strong hydrogen bonding whereas the ether has weak London forces. So the intermolecular forces in water are stronger, therefore its vapor pressure is lower than ether. Second factor that affects the vapor pressure is the temperature. Remember that the temperature is directly proportional to the vapor pressure. It means that with the increase of the temperature, the vapor pressure increases and with the decrease of the temperature, the vapor pressure rate decreases. Why this happen? Because with the increase of the temperature, the kinetic energy of the molecules increases and more molecules overcomes the force of attraction and change from the liquid to the gaseous state. So increasing the rate of the evaporation and the condensation. So as a result of this, the vapor pressure rate increases with the increase of the temperature. Now let's discuss boiling point. Let's start understanding the boiling point with the help of diagram. Consider a liquid in an open container. So 
with the increase in temperature vapor pressure increases and ultimately reaches to the atmospheric pressure or external pressure at this stage boiling start remember that at boiling temperature remains constant although heat is continuously supplied why temperature remains constant at the boiling point we will discuss it later so by definition boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the liquid becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure or the external pressure friends as you can see a liquid in an open container so when we increase the temperature the kinetic energy of the molecules increases due to which they overcome the force of attraction between the molecules result in an increase of the vapor pressure and finally when the vapor pressure becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure or the external pressure the boiling of the liquid starts So the question is why temperature remains constant at boiling point to understand this let's start understanding the mechanism of boiling we know that with the increase of the temperature vapor pressure increases and ultimately reaches to the atmospheric pressure or the external pressure and at this stage boiling start at boiling the temperature remains constant although heat is continuously supplied why Remember that before boiling heat is supplied is partially used to increase the potential energy and the partially used to increase the kinetic energy. We know that with the increase of the kinetic energy of the molecules the intermolecular force of attraction between the molecules decreases. So here the heat supplied is partially used to break the intermolecular forces and separate the molecules. whereas the heat energy supplied to increase the potential energy of the molecules here the heat energy partially taken away by the outgoing molecules but at boiling point all the heat supplied is used to increase the potential energy and the kinetic energy remains constant so the temperature remains constant at the boiling point as we know that the temperature is directly proportional to the kinetic energy so here at the boiling the temperature is constant therefore the kinetic energy of the molecules is also constant so let's discuss the effect of the external pressure on the boiling point of the liquid as we know that the liquid boils when its vapor pressure becomes equal to the external pressure thus the boiling point depends upon the external pressure or simply we can say that the boiling point is directly proportional to the external pressure so when the external pressure is high the liquid requires more heat to equalize its vapor pressure to the external pressure thus boil at higher temperature Similarly when the external pressure is low the liquid needs less heating to equalize its vapor pressure to the external pressure and thus boil at a low temperature Let's talk about an increase in the boiling point by taking an example of the pressure cooker As we all know that the pressure cooker is a closed container so that the vapors as well as air in it cannot escape and thus the pressure inside it increases as we know that the pressure is directly proportional to the boiling point of the water so due to the increase in the pressure the boiling point of the water inside the cooker increases so more heat will be absorbed by the water and as a result the food will be co uh, cooked quickly now let's discuss about the decrease in the boiling point by taking an example of the vacuum distillation so what is vacuum distillation the distillation that is carried out at reduced or lower pressure is called a vacuum distillation as we know that the boiling point is directly proportional to the external pressure or the atmospheric pressure so by lowering the external pressure the boiling point lowers thus in the vacuum distillation the boiling takes this at a temperature lower than the normal boiling point by reducing the external pressure